here's the lathe finished it's been quite some time since I have actually finished it and I'm shooting this video I had I thought I shot the video before but I can't find any of the files so I'm shooting it again it only took me about a week to do but I would say I had it spread over two weeks probably most of it was uh, doing the the painting prepping it for painting it's done now it turned out quite well I'm pretty happy with it made a few changes to it I added Uh, metric uh, gears to it. The, it's a 127 and a series of gears 45, 50, 60, 70, 80 to cut all the different uh, metric threads. So anyways now I can do both with this. So I'm quite happy about that. I, had, I bought another lathe and I uh, took the parts off of it and put it on this one. So it's pretty good. I've replaced the broken oil caps with uh, Zerks, as you can see here. They work well. In my opinion, they're better than the oil caps uh, because they don't collect any swarf. Uh, you can't hook them, they don't get damaged. They're much sturdier. And I have a little uh, kind of a grease gun that just you just shove it down and it shoves the oil into them. It's a much better approach, in my opinion, than the oil caps. I left the oil caps on in, in certain places because they're in good shape and they're more or less protected. So, if I have to, if they ever do get damaged, I'll change those as well. But that's where I left it off. I made some stops here. This is a carriage stop. It's adjustable. I also made another one over here. It can be put on either machine. It's, uh, I took apart an old micrometer and uh, I'm using the barrel and the thimble on it uh, for a micro stop. It's in metric but uh, it works quite well. I'm quite happy with it. You can see the metric gears on this one. They're actually loaded on. This is the 127 and that is an 80. And I have a series of other gears so that I can cut all the different uh, metric threads. I don't know if you can see them here or not. But that's what that's for. I still have the, the one and a half horsepower motor on it. I wired it up so that it uh, does forward and reverse. I put the uh, starter switch back on. Tailstock. I had to clean it up a little bit. I had to ream out the uh, Morris 2 taper because it was a little uh, banged up. It's good shape now. Painted the base. Cleaned up the chuck. Got a, a chuck, a three jaw chuck. I got that from the uh, lathe that I purchased for parts as well. It was a 10 inch lathe that didn't come with the carriage but I got a really good deal on it. So I took the parts off of that I needed for this lathe. I took the tool rack off of the, the other lathe that I sold, the 10 inch that was in this place right here. I have a uh, taper attachment for it here. It's a, it's a big one. It is 28 inches long um, and uh, it has a total swing of about 50 inches. I guess you could probably have more than that, but that's with 50% overhang on each of these slides here. I also haven't put the flooding system on. Here are the major components right here. I just haven't got around to it and I'm going to hold off actually until I move to a larger place and I can put the lathe in one spot indefinitely. Right now I have it tucked in underneath these uh, cabinets here so that's out of the way that and I can get the car in to work on it. Eventually I would like to have this mounted to the floor leveled. It's a good project. 
quite happy with the way things turned out. There were no surprises other than what I mentioned when I was doing the uh, teardown. I filled in uh, that divot with some JB weld, brought it down, and I took a stone to clear off any high points where it got chewed up here. Base works well. I can move it in and out with it and when I need to do heavy work I can block it up and level it. Like I said eventually I want to have this in a fixed spot so that mobile base really won't be necessary. I'll probably leave it on the base though because it's quite hard to get off. It's quite heavy. So I'll just block it up and uh, have it leveled and leave it where it's at. Probably the same with this one right here. Pretty much everything that I've done on this lathe I've done on the other one as well. I've made the tool racks. I have it set up so I can put the DRO on this lathe or the other lathe. It's just a you know a cheap poor man's DRO setup but it works well enough. I'd like to get a permanent DRO much like the one I have on the mill here. I would like to have something like that on the 12 by 30 lathe. This will probably remain the way it is right now. I want to hook up a variable frequency drive on the other machine as well. Again, that'll have to wait until I can get a, uh, a decent three-phase motor for it. I want to drive it with at least uh, a one and a half horsepower, probably a two would be all that that inverter will take. I like having two lathes, so I leave one pretty much with a collet on it, and the other one uh, I have a either a three jaw or the four jaw, so it's quite convenient that way. I prefer using this one for cutting threads because with the variable frequency drive I can bring the speed rate down to zero so that I can come right up to a stop safely and I have much more control than I do on the other lathe which is just a single speed. Just about covers the standard modern lathe rebuilds. So upcoming projects, the taper attachment for the 12 by 30 lathe, the flood coolant system. I'll probably put it on but not use it until things are set up. I also want to make, a, of course, a splash guard for this, otherwise uh, it's no good having the coolant system. I like to put a tool rack on the splash guard, so that's an upcoming project down the road.